morning is Jesus wants us to come and see. I got a word from the Lord for you. There's no have to in the kingdom of God. There's one big marvelous get to. And I never ever want to try to make you eat. I just want to help you get hungry. It's one of the lessons Gwen and I learned raising four boys. One time we made one of our sons eat. You know, kind of like my parents did me growing up. But when we made one of our sons eat, two hours later it came back at us. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And we learned our lesson very well. God doesn't want anybody, God's not trying to make anybody eat here. God will let you get hungry. I'll testify to that. He won't make you eat, but he will let you get hungry. And may our hunger be a true north to guide us to the Lord in new and exciting ways. Jesus wants us to come and see. And God's word this morning is just, just full. It's a lot of good stuff. Amen. The next day, John 1, 29 through 42. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him. This is John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Next day, he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. <clears throat> when Jesus turned and saw them following he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two, who heard him, John speak, and followed him, was Andrew. Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. God, may you richly bless this reading of your holy word. May we be persons who come and see with you. Your name we pray. Amen. Art Green who was a fellow student of mine at Stockton State College, now Stockton University. Art 
was from Atlantic City. We nicknamed him, I nicknamed him Sydney. So Sydney was from AC. We had an expository writing class together. As freshmen, we then became really good buddies with my roommate Dave. So Sydney would kind of hang out with us, and one day Sydney said to us, You've never had a sub like a White House sub in Atlantic City. And I looked at Sydney and I said, Sydney, I've had good subs before. How good could a sub be? I've had a Riddle and Martin sub. It's right on the border of East Brunswick and South River. That's about the best sub I've ever had. That's a good sub. And, and you know, quit bragging about this sub place. And so Sydney kept on talking about it. So I decided to do a come and see in my life. I walked into the White House sub shop, White House, home of submarines. I noticed something on my left hand side in the upper corner, right above the cashier. There's a picture of the Beatles holding a White House sub. And the owner, just on one knee in front of them. The owner who started White House in 1946, an ex-GI, started it with his uncle and his aunt. And so there are the Beatles holding this big White House sub. And then I noticed Jerry Lewis holding a sub, as well as all the pictures of celebrities having a White House sub. So I sat down and I had a White House sub, which was the best sub I had ever had in my life. And I said to Sydney, I said, you're right. And I stopped getting on Sydney's case about his admiration of the White House sub shop. I was thankful that I did a come and see. Jesus said, to the disciples, the first disciples, come and see. And what he offers is even better than a White House sub. 129, the next day, John the baptizer saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Check this guy out. You know, there are many titles of Jesus, wonderful. Counselor, mighty God. Amen. So many things. But John the baptizer, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I wonder what he was thinking. Maybe the blood of the Lamb. Remember yet, I need you to kill a lamb. And I need you just to take a little of the blood and put it on your doorpost so that you will be passed over and that your lives will be preserved before I get you out of this place where you've been a slave. Maybe John the Baptizer was thinking about the sacrificial lambs of the temple where the people's sins were placed on the lamb and where they sought God's forgiveness. Or maybe John the Baptizer was thinking that in the spring when new lambs were born, you do know that you took the best, the very best, the most perfect lamb, and you offered it to God as a sacrifice. You took the very best that you had, and you said to God, this is yours. Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of God. Point two, 139. He said to them, Jesus said to them, come and see. God gives the best in Jesus. And Jesus wants us to come and see. No, I, his name is Michael Renninger, he's a Catholic priest from Richmond, Virginia, and he gave a great message recently that I saw. And he cited, you know, we talked about the, the Magi recently, just a couple of weeks ago. But he talked about a, a short story called The Gift of the Magi. 
by O. Henry. It was about a really wonderful, wonderful couple, Jim and Del. They didn't have much money. Jim had one prized possession. He had a pocket watch. That was his dad's and his grandfather's. But he didn't have a chain for it. And Della was a very beautiful woman. And she had one thing that really made her special. She had the longest hair. It went down to her knees. So one Christmas, Jim knew what he had to do. He was going to sell his watch, and he did. He sold his watch, and he got Della the most beautiful tortoise shell combs for her beautiful long hair. And that Christmas, Della knew what she had to do. She would cut her hair and sell it to a wig maker, and she would buy Jim a chain for his beautiful pocket. Well, that Christmas Eve, Jim walked into the house and saw that Della had short hair. And the truth was revealed. In that Christmas, Jim and Della realized what a special thing they had. For each of them had sought to give the best to the other. And speaking of really cool gifts, oh, Henry then talked about the gifts of the Magi. I don't know what Joseph and Mary would have done without those gifts from the wise men. It bankrolled their escape to Egypt to save for us the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. When you love, you are willing to give your best. God gives his best to us. And you know, this morning, you know, sometimes, you know, when I'm getting ready for a message, and this has been more lately than ever, you know, I want to prepare. I want to, you know, get it all down and get it all ready. But I feel like God said to me, more than I want you to prepare, I want you to pray. So I went to Jesus Calling this morning in my prayer devotion, and this line jumped out at me. Actually, my light shines on every situation you will ever face. And you know, I flashed back on that line. And I remembered Matt Rioli when he was with us and with the Master's Commission. Brought some dynamic young preachers with us. One of them was named Reuben. And he talked about uh, doing like some uh, roller skate or skateboarding when he injured himself. And he had this terrible wound on his hand. And the people were trying to help him after his accident, but Reuben would not let him touch his hand. Until finally he realized that if you, you know, his hand was just full of gravel and just it needed to be washed clean. And it was like, touch me, do anything for me, just don't touch my hand. And Reuben realized he had to give over his hand to be cleaned, to be taken care of. My light shines in every situation you will ever face. God invites us in our lives to come and see, to connect with Him, to let His shine, let His light shine in our lives. God gives His very best to us. His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Third thing I want to say is 141, chapter 1, verse 41. Andrew meets Jesus. And he wants to introduce his brother to Jesus. You find something really good, you want to share it. You found the best, you want to share the best. 
He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. Andrew's first reaction is to share Jesus with his brother. You have the best, you want to share the best. What will come and see look like in your life? Do you have a situation in your life right now where you gotta, you just got to take it to the Lord? And you got to take it to the Lord and, and you got to spend time with the Lord. And you spend enough time with the Lord, soon you'll hear the Lord say to you, I got this. But then you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? We're about to go in the fiery furnace. Lord, if we believe you got this, but even if you don't got this, you're my Lord and we're with you. Even if you don't got it, we're with you, Lord. I close with this. I've got another common sea story. Through the years, the United Methodist men hold a quadrennial event. That's an example of using a fancy word, but you don't have to. It means it's every four years. Quad. Quadrennial event. Every four years. So, almost, God bless you, 16 years ago, Aaron and I went to the Methodist men's event. It was Purdue, 2,000 men. I could call Aaron right now and say, you remember the speakers? He would remember them. One of them was Rudy, the real Rudy from the movie. Man, they cleaned that guy up in that movie. I mean, the real Rudy was just, wow, woo, the miracle. God did getting him through Notre Dame and playing on that football team. And then there was a man named Clay Dyer, professional bass fisherman. But here's the thing about play. No legs, no arms. And a little flipper on his left hand side. And Clay Dyer took his fishing rod. He cast it and had a kid hold his arm out about 50, 50, 60, 70 feet away and perfectly nailed it around his arm and his cast. And then, but Clay was from the South and before he did that he said, I have a little bit of a mismeasurement. His line was tangled. And in front of over a thousand Methodist men, he untangled his line with his tongue. Never forgotten that. Four years later, I went with Matthew. This time it was in Belmont College. A thousand men this time, from down from 2,000. Four years later, it took Robert. This time it was 600 men. Four years later, it was Joe's turn. We let Robert come along. We drove to Indianapolis. It was now at a church. There were 200 men. You're wondering what happened, what's happening to the men? They're dying. They're older. The program was very good, but I have to confess to you, it was a long trip, and then I'm sitting in the, the pew, and I look at the program, and there's a college professor who's going to give the message. I did not drive 10 hours to hear some college professor give a lecture. I want to hear good preaching. So I had a little bit of an attitude, but you know, I've driven all that way to pay attention. The speaker's name was Kevin Watson. And he gave a little talk on something called the class meeting. He said, we've isolated the variable that caused the United Methodist Church to be the largest church in this country in 1850. There was a low bar membership. Anybody could join. Except Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you're in. But there was a high bar of keeping your membership. You had to do one thing. Only one thing. For an hour a week, you would just meet with other Christians and you answered one question. How goes it with your soul? For an hour a week. What's Jesus doing in your life? And then they prayed. And then if you didn't go to your class meeting, 
you lost your membership in the church. Real simple. And this guy, Kevin Watson, he gave this talk. He said, he said, he then talked about the reason why it declined, and that when that practice declined, that's when the Methodist Church started to decline. And, uh, but I was so moved by Professor Watson's message that afterwards I walked forward and I said, let's pray together. And we shared a prayer together, and in fact, he even has a little book that shows you how to start a class meeting, which actually we have, 6 a.m. every Thursday morning. Uh, a couple of us men get together, and we start at 6, and we end at 7. We answer one question, how goes it with our soul? And then we pray at the end. God wants us to come and see. God wants us to come and be with him and to come and see. You know, years ago, and I, I can, you know, how is love spelled? T-I-M-E. Time. It's particularly true with children. Amen. How is love spelled? T-I-M-E. There's another relationship that it's spelled that way. And it's with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the invitation to come and see. And Lord, I know you don't make us eat, but you do let us get hungry. So help us to get hungry, to spend time with you. Even this year, to even have it as our focus, to want to pay attention to you. It's in your name we pray. We love you and we need you. And we thank you that love finds a way to give its best. You have certainly given your best to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. While on others thou art calling, do not pass us by. To your name we pray. All God's people said. Amen. Amen. Thank you.